SketchUp is a wonderful program for creating all sorts of terrific models, and you can even use plugins to render in it, but sometimes it's the sad truth that people want to use other programs uh, out there um, for their modeling, construction documents, and rendering. Um, but sometimes it's really nice to take advantage of models that are already created in SketchUp. Uh, and the big example is, uh, let's say I'm working in Revit, which is an Autodesk program, um, and I, but I want to use these table and chairs uh, in that um, uh, program, and I want them to render. Um, first of all, you can go to the 3D warehouse, and any object that you find in that 3D warehouse, and I, I searched for some dining room tables here, you will find that some are created in SketchUp, probably most, but many are actually created in other programs, AutoCAD, 3ds Max, and converted to SketchUp drawings. Any 3D content that works in SketchUp can work in Revit. Sometimes it needs a little manipulation. And there's, there's a couple major steps um, that you need to take to get it to render properly. First, preparing the model in SketchUp is what you need to do, putting things on proper layers and removing all paint. Then uh, bringing it into Revit, uh, often you'll want to um, put it inside a family so that it behaves like other similar objects, in this case furniture. And then in Revit you uh, can't paint it the, the kind of normal way um, using uh, the Apply Materials button. You'll need to use something called the Object Styles. So let's go through those uh, steps here. First of all, um, preparing the model, I like to get rid of any extraneous objects. Okay, so there's the scale figure, I'll delete him. Um, you might also want to view any hidden geometry and see if there's anything hidden in your uh, model. Um, and this is particularly true when you get things off of 3D Warehouse or Form Fonts is another uh, source for uh, great models. Um, Sometimes people hide things that um, you, you, you don't want to see, uh, and that will surprise you when you get to Revit. Anyway, um, the next thing that you'll want to do is um, create a couple of layers representative of the different materials in the model. Uh, every material in this model it, it won't translate when we get to Revit, so you'll need to put um, objects that you want to be a specific material on a layer for that material. And I'll just create a, a few here for the different materials that are uh, visible. Um, black lacquer is one. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, maybe beige lacquer um, for uh, the other one. And I'll just call the last one fabric. You probably don't need to be any more specific than that. And then you need to put these objects on those layers. And the way that you do that, you double click Oops, use the select command and double click on an object and often you have to kind of drill down to find the original object. So for example, if I want to put this seat back onto um, the uh, black lacquer layer, see how I've selected the component and double clicked on it to edit, but there's a subgroup within this and you can keep going and oh, now there's a component that's inside the group. Go to that. Oh, there's a group that has this uh, seat back. Need to keep drilling down. Oh, there we go. I can finally get to the point where I'm selecting the seat back. I've hidden the rest of the model, by the way, just for clarity. Um, you can see that um, it uh, brings up the uh, entity info here. I've, I've opened the entity info dialog box. I can just choose the black lacquer layer. Okay. Um, and uh, exit out of that element. I can go to the next element, paint it, or sorry, uh, change its color to, um, uh, what did I say this is? Oh, this is black lacquer also, okay? Uh, and these guys are fabric. I can triple click on these objects, by the way, to change their layer to fabric, okay? Um, and, oh, this one too, there we go, layer fabric. And what are we missing? Oh, we missed the table, right? Go to the table. This guy here is looking like it's going to want to be the beige lacquer. This guy here is going to want to be the black lacquer. A little tedious. Let's make sure we got all the elements here. Beige lacquer, right? So there we go. And you might say, how do I know that I got everything? Well, there's a little trick. Um, you can force uh, 
SketchUp to color by layer. And when it does this, the colors that you see are going to be representative uh, of the layers. And of course, uh, some of these look a little similar. So let's choose, uh, I don't know, let's choose brown or something. Uh, oh, I like going to the crayons on the uh, Mac version. I don't know why I think that's kind of funny. Um, I just close that, go back and color by layer. And you should see um, a nice uh, colorful scheme here. Okay, now uh, that's step number one of many in preparing the model. The other thing that you need to do is all objects need to be on, uh, need to have no paint on them whatsoever. What I like to do, and this may not be the best modeling practice, but um, I find that it's the only way that I can be assured that everything is painted correctly, is I basically explode this model until it's all the way back down to its constituent parts. Now, if you're in the middle of design, and uh, you're still um, creating uh, components and modifying the design, um, I would not recommend doing this. Um, I would save a copy of this model and um, uh, uh, explode everything in that one because you, you know you don't want to mess up your um, uh, model. Uh, the, those groups and components are, are really there to help you model. But anyway, keep exploding until there's nothing left to explode. I use Command A or Control A on a PC to select all the objects. Um, and right now you can see their material is, um, there's a little question mark, and, and that basically is SketchUp's way of telling you that they're painted um, different materials. You can actually uh, just double click on the um, uh, default material. And it uh, should, in theory, make those the default material. All right, except on coloring by layer. <laughs> Let's stop doing that. They should all turn white. You can also select all the materials, uh, all the objects, use the paint bucket, choose the default color, and dump paint on them that way. So now I have this lovely model. It has no groups in it. Nothing is painted. But it is um, set up so that the layers, uh, the materials, are on different layers. Uh, what you'll do, save this model. Um, so that you can go back to it in case something goes horribly wrong. But then what you'll want to do is export this model as a uh, 3D model. And uh, oh, let me just close some of these windows here. And just make sure that you choose AutoCAD file. And of course, you'll want to save it into a folder that um, makes sense for your project. Um, also, you'll want to check the options. There are a number of things that you can export. Typically, you don't want to see text dimensions or construction geometry, but you do want to see edges and faces. Um, what I sometimes do is choose an older version of AutoCAD than is the current one, um, partly because I'm never totally sure uh, which version of Revit I've got uh, and which version of AutoCAD it happens to read. So it doesn't really matter a whole lot. AutoCAD versions are um, backwards compatible, but it's always good to make sure that you've got the right version. So, anyway. so here we are in Revit and we want to bring in this wonderfully prepared um, model from SketchUp. Uh, you could uh, start a new project and uh, just uh, import it into a, a new project directly. Um, that works fine and actually the, the process um, for applying materials works the same. I'm going to put it in a family though, just because I want to have the control to say put this in a, um, uh, a chart, uh, you know, a schedule. Um, I want to be able to override materials and different views if, if it uh, becomes necessary. And this is a piece of furniture, so I'm going to put it in the furniture, in a blank furniture family. Okay, and uh, this is, I'm not going to explain the whole family uh, modeling environment for you. Uh, however, uh, let it be uh, said that um, the process for inserting uh, uh, an outside document into a family is exactly the same as in a main Revit model. You go to the Insert ribbon, choose Import CAD, and then browse to find your object. Now, normally you leave the colors as are. You, you don't have to, you can make it, force it to be black and white, which actually looks a little better. Um, but I'm gonna leave them colored because it helps me illustrate the layers. The other thing is that um, Revit uh, will automatically insert this into your project 
um, based on the uh, origin of the base model or some center to center uh, arrangement. I like to use um, the uh, manual option and use the base point in the model. Uh, it just gives me uh, a little bit more control. Sometimes uh, objects uh, created in other programs, AutoCAD or uh, 3ds Max or who knows what, um, it's sometimes the origin is way off in the middle of outer space and you, you just don't know. So um, it's just a lot easier to, um, to do it this way, to uh, use a manual base point. Anyway, here's my uh, lovely, lovely model. Okay, and uh, we can even force it to display with realistic um, colors. Uh, right now, the realistic colors are not so not so sporty um, because we haven't applied any yet. So, what you need to do, uh, and again, this process is the same if you're in a family or if you're in a main model and you've inserted SketchUp content. Um, is uh, rather than uh, go to the modify ribbon and click on the paint bucket and start painting away, um, we can't do that. What we need to do is go to the manage ribbon and click click on object styles. And object styles are uh, basically um, it's a menu where you can override uh, the appearance of different things. And there's a, the same menu occurs in both the family and the um, uh, main model. And uh, what you'll see, first of all, there's a whole tab for imported objects here. And if you have multiple families in the same uh, component, uh, you'll see them all listed here. You'll also see the layers that we created way back when, when we were in SketchUp. Okay, And in theory, anyway, these will uh, correspond to the materials that are in this model. Now, uh, it also includes layer 0, which is the default layer in SketchUp. The weird thing is it does apply a render material, but this is actually just the color that it was painted, the layer was painted in SketchUp. Uh, if you have the RGB color chart memorized, that is the RGB color that is represented here uh, on the tabletop. Anyway, uh, it, like um, uh, other menus in, Sketch in uh, Revit, you can find the little I'm, I've got a menu under here button. It's uh, three little dots. Click on that and it brings up our wonderful material browser. Okay. Now, uh, this material is called render material 76-38-0. Well, first of all, we can change that. I'm going to call it underscore uh, beige lacquer. I think that was the, which one we're working on here. Um, and uh, you can even, um, you know, change its uh, class here if you wanted to uh, change it to paint or something like that. Um, I uh, generally use the render appearance for the shaded graphics, um, just because I often run things in shaded view, not um, uh, realistic view. I find my computer runs a little faster that way. Then on the appearance uh, tab, um, well, you know, this doesn't really look all that exciting right now. Um, what we can do is uh, go to the uh, asset library and see if we can find um, some uh, lacquer. I think there's some, oh, here we go, white lacquer. Lovely. Just double click on it to uh, add it to the material. And you can change any number of features, you know, the glossiness and the, the ref reflectivity um, uh, as you see fit in the appearance. And hopefully the shaded appearance will change. Um, and you can see here in the list, I typed underscore beige lacquer, so it was easy to find. Click apply and OK. And you see how the tabletop color has now changed. And I can continue to do that with these other materials. Again, click inside the material box. My little go to the other menu button appears. Click on that. And I'll go and change the name. Underscore black lacquer and change the graphics to use render appearance and then the appearance I'll go and I'll find that uh, lacquer which I believe is here. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. And you know again these things uh, these are kind of uh, the appearance library is uh, great because it has these ready-made materials but you know sometimes they're not so great. I uh, am a big fan of using this little preview window um, to give me a much better sense of what the material is going to look like, you know, this is this is a, feels a little too reflective to me, or perhaps a little too glossy. So I'm just going to lower that down a little bit um, and apply and okay. 
And uh, what you should see is that the material should change. And we can, we can do the same with this fabric, okay? Now, we can't render it in here. Um, so what you'll need to do is load it into the project. Um, I'm just gonna close this particular window here and close this one, because I've already got it saved. And uh, let me go to my main uh, model here. Project with the furniture already inserted. Uh, and there they are in the model. Okay, so this is a project. I could have dozens of these tables and other walls and good things in here. And what you'll see if you go to the materials menu, um, that those materials have translated over. Sometimes if you've updated the model, um, you may have to come and make sure that um, the materials that you've updated work. Um, you can also do final tweaking of any material that you've created um, in this, uh, in the main model it will not translate backwards to the original family, however. So you can see here that uh, this is the rendered view of uh, this table and chairs, just kind of in outer space. And um, there's not really anything in here that's gonna be reflective, uh, reflected off the table, but um, it's a pretty good representation of the materials. Um, I think I'd make the lacquer a little darker and uh, perhaps a little more reflective. And once you put it into a space, um, uh, it, you, you will have to decide if you like that finish. But that's the uh, basic way that you can um, take content from SketchUp and bring it into uh, Revit for uh, use in a project and especially for use in rendering.